But hello, sunshine, what's going on? What I got for you today, I want to give you an overview of my homemade moisture meter. It's baler mounted. It reads the uh, moisture on the bales that come out of the chamber. What that's good for, uh, number one, in, in my neck of the woods, uh, we fight too much humidity during the day. Other people fight not enough. Uh, may be helpful for both sides of the argument. I also run a hay preservative. I'll show that in another video. It's also homemade. Uh, this one here is going to be all about showing how I built this hay moisture meter. I think I got a ground total of $32 in it out of pocket. I've used some other scrap and some things I had laying around. But out of pocket, $32. And that was just for uh, the readout here, the, the monitor, if you will. Uh, so let's get started. Stick around. I'll show you the model numbers of this stuff. Um, show you how I built the pickup in the back. Uh, it won't be too long a video. Stick with me. Uh, there, there'll be a playlist that'll have uh, the hay preservative in there. Also, I'll make one that's got the bale uh, hitch to fit like a coon's accumulator and uh, numerous other things. So stick around. This will be a short video. Uh, hang, hang out with us and, and we'll see you here in a minute. Now the technology in this moisture meter is for the hay is actually this moisture meter right here. It was designed for wood. I use them on my sawmill and for lumber. Uh, checking boards, see if they're dry enough to use inside. Use it with my kiln. Uh, check for lumber. Uh, you can pick these up at Rainforest Place. I don't know, they send stuff right to your doorstep by Brown Santa Claus. Uh, I think 32 bucks is what I give for this. I looked it up last night. It's what they're going for now. I might give less than that. I got two or three of them. And always keep a couple on hand. I'll show you a close up of that here in a minute. It's a General Tools is the brand of this one. I don't reckon it matters. I know this one here, and I'll explain to you the uh, technology on how this works and how it drives moisture uh, reading. Uh, so I can't say if the other ones are gonna work the same. But this one here will work just fine with the pickup I built to read on the bale chamber. Anyhow, this is a General Tools MM4DE, Mary Mary 4 David Edward uh, is the model number, or the brand and the model number. Of that, Like I say, about 32 toad hides will fetch that right to your doorstep. Now here's the back side of the same rig. Uh, you'll notice, I think you can see it, there's two little wires going in the top of that. That's duct tape, to, or like chickens tape is what I use on that. Uh, I'll show you here in just a second. I want you to notice the high quality of craftsmanship right here. That's zip tied to just a bent up welding rod stuck on a magnet. I want you to notice the high quality craftsmanship. You see how I use two different colors of zip ties and even trim the ends, you know, because I wanted this video to be perfect for you guys. Now here's a, another moisture meter. Uh, same one. This one here is out of my salt box from a sawmill. Uh, but it's the same same deal. Uh, you turn that you turn that on. Well, maybe. Batteries may be dead on that. Nope, turned on. They always read about, it's humid as heck today. Uh, they always read something 8-9% just when you turn them on. And it'll keep reading that. It's reading humidity in the air, actually. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. It's got two little bitty uh, sharp little needles sticking out of the top and um, we'll change that. It's showing 8.1. We'll just touch that across my fingers. Of course, I'm sweating a little bit. Uh, I don't know what it read, but it read, I can hear it beeping. It's reading high. Uh, so that's how a moisture meter works. It reads resistance across the known distance. Uh, if that's drier, it'll be less conductivity there. If it's wetter, it'll be more conductivity. That's all, that, that's the basis of how you make this thing work. Uh, let's go around and show you the pickup in the back. But first, yeah, I get sidetracked. Gray squirrel. Now here's another moisture meter. This is actually a hay moisture meter. This is a down horse. Uh, pretty good name. Pretty good name in uh, hay testing equipment. Uh, but it works on the same principle as a wood moisture meter. 
this one's I don't know four or five six hundred dollars I've had it for a while but to be honest with you I hardly ever use it anymore uh, I've tested it against this numerous times this baby lets me know exactly what's going on while I'm bailing uh, but anyhow it works the same way it's measuring resistance across the known distance basically in between this insulated spot and that insulated spot it's measuring it's measuring uh, a known resistance right across there and I'll digress a minute these don't actually measure moisture. Like I say, they measure resistance across known <coughs> distance to give you an indication of what moisture is. In order to do true moisture, you'd have to either put it in an oven. Yeah, I know, that's something to crow about, ain't it? You'd either have to put it in an oven or a microwave, take a known weight sample, say 1,000 grams, microwave it out 30 seconds, check and see how far down the weight goes. Keep doing that like 30 seconds at a time until you quit losing moisture and let's say it weighs 850 grams when you're done well that's 85 percent left over so that means it was 15 percent moisture you lost 15 percent evaporation uh, again this is just a known distance here uh, and i duplicated that and i'm going to pull this bail bail out here so give me a minute. Well, it won't be but just a second to you guys because I'll stop this camera. I won't make you listen to me sit there beating my gums. Uh, let me pull this out and I want to show you how I built. Ah, right, let's talk about what I want to talk about for a minute and, and how I built this. This is uh, what made it all come together. And I think anybody can whittle one of these out uh, just out of some scrap you got around. Or you may have to go buy some brand new scrap. But this is the heart and soul that they get I looked them up last night, $350 to $430 for a bale mounted deal. So I'm going to save $320 to $400 just by making this myself. I'll show you how it's done. Now, I want you also note this is this is mounted to your bale tension. Uh, the deal that pushes down for your bale tension. I don't know what specific name of it is. But this is rigidly mounted to the end of that. It's not floating. It's making real good contact with the hay. It's tight. I'll show you how I did that too. It's nothing, nothing major, but I'll show you how and you won't have to do your own thinking maybe. I started pushing that bale back just a little bit. And you can see she's making good contact right there. That'll give me a pretty good moisture meter, meter reading. Now I just happen to have a piece of old, about two by six probably Delrin. Here's <clears throat> real high wear it machines about like that gum cottage cheese uh, it takes a lot of slicking up it don't chew off first it's five inches wide and all oh, give or take inch and a half thick about anything hard plastic like this i think it'd work uh not too hard you don't want it brittle like i say this is this is just tougher than woodpecker lips but it don't conduct electricity it's got some give to it uh, I mean, you can just almost feel it. it <clears throat> you can feel it's not just super hard like glass. Oh, I don't know if I can show it here, give or take. Yeah, my big old fat head's causing a deal. But that's an exaggeration. But I took a machine to a little bit of lip in here, all probably inch, inch and a half deep. And that, and <clears throat> actually, that's probably exactly what I did to it. Cause I think this is the end left over from where I machined that out, took the mill and just milled that out about so wide. And then I cut it across here and that's the piece I'm using over there. Uh, I'll show you what that's for. Uh, but yeah, you'll want this, you'll want a notch in there. You can see what I did and how much notch you'll need. Uh, some sort of material like that. I use Delrin. It's, it's just what I had laying around. Okay, here's what the bale's going to see. This is the underneath side of the bale tension deal we've seen outside. All right, here are two brass pickups. That's what that's what I'm going to get my readings off of. Now, what these are, they're turned out. I'll try to draw a picture of them. They're, they're just turned out of brass I had, and they got a shoulder on them with a stem that sticks up and that stems threaded uh drilled and threaded drilled and tapped for like a little 1032 screw and that's that's what i put on my 
uh, hook my wires to on top there, uh, spring loaded. So they got oh quarter three eighths, this this diameter, about a half inch, and then it next down to I don't remember what I did, probably three eighths of an inch shaft that goes up through that Delrin block and that keeps them all straight. These set in a little pocket up there. You don't want them protruding down uh, because that that cylinder, that shoulder, that'll catch a that'll catch hay and wrap on both sides of it. And then all you're doing is measuring measuring a piece of that hay that's stuck there. You're not measuring anything else. So you want these. You want that. You want that about flush. You don't want to be able to catch a fingernail on that or anything like that. Uh, so now the distance from here to here in accordance with your moisture meter you don't want to go center to center on this and center to center on the moisture meter well it's it's a needle so i mean it's 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 close uh but you want it more or less to be from inside to inside because you're measuring resistance across known and it's not going to measure plumb out here and plumb out here electricity is going to take the easiest path it's going to go from here to here and not from here and jump all the way around there. Electricity's pretty lazy, uh, if you ain't never noticed. I mean, you get in a fight with electricity, buddy, it wants to kick your butt right quick and in a hurry because it's lazy. It wants to go back doing other stuff. Another thing worth mentioning, that's that uh, relief I cut in this Delrin block that I showed you on the throwaway piece or the salvage piece. This fits up inside, this Delrin piece fits up inside, you can see it from the top, it fits up inside this steel just enough where I can get two bolts to run up through here and uh, the nuts are on top. So I can pull this out if I need to. The bolts are rounded off on the back side so they don't catch hay, you don't want any, you don't want any sharp things under there. This is on the same plane here, you can't really feel it. This Delrin block may set all oh, sixteenth to an eighth below the deal for pressure, but then again, it's got some. Boy, that's slick. Boy, that's just slicker than a possum that's been sitting out there sunning along the road around that yellow line for a couple of days. Man, that's slick. It's been wore down real good, and I've probably put fifteen thousand bales under this. It ain't moved any, but boy, it's slick. Uh, there you can see it again from a different angle. Might also be. Worth noting, since I'm already running wires back to this, I'm also running uh, video camera wires back, backup, backup monitors. I do not like the wireless ones. I like the wired ones because the wireless ones they still need to have uh, they still need to have power to them. I usually get it from your reverse cameras. Made a mistake and ordered. Well, it's making my skin leak out here today. And I ain't even done nothing. Uh, the, the wireless ones, they still have to have power. They just get it from your reverse light switch. So they messed me over. Oh, I got a pair of them in there. It ain't worth nothing to me because you still got to run power. Uh, don't let the wireless part fool you. They just send a wireless signal, which ain't near as good as a wired signal. It's always breaking up. So, and, and I run the wires through a piece of heater hose, garden hose up to the front of the baler. It's all tied down. That keeps that all together. And I also run another camera when I hook up to my Coons accumulator. This camera I don't use much. I can back it up. I use it for backing up to my Coons accumulator. Rig reason I originally mounted it there, I was having problems with the knotter and it was missing just not very often, but every once in a while, once every hundred bale or so, twice every hundred bale, 10 times a bale. It, it just, it was sporadic. So I had this mounted right here i could watch that on my monitor and as soon as them strings come out i can see if they were tied and untied if i have any problems with my strings i can tell that running a running a person on a wagon wouldn't be such a big deal when you run the accumulator it is a big deal you won't notice it till it gets to the top and then it just comes all loose inside everything so i i guess that's part of the problems of the first world country there i don't know but that, that's our little fix for it. I don't run this camera much. I usually hook the pigtail into the one on the accumulator so I can watch it. Uh, and you've seen the monitor up there. There's no sense to make a separate video for that. Anybody with two brain cells rubbed together, I think can get that thrown together and just put them where you want them. Uh, and, and besides that, I didn't build nothing of that, so I ain't proud of it so much. I just bought stuff, throwed money at it, and put it on there, you know, $60, $70 for that. 
but guys if you liked her watch some more of my videos i don't know where they'll be uh i don't know I, I try to put them up on the screen this like a monkey flinging boogers at the zoo you don't know where they're gonna land so uh i got some funny ones i was a little too serious in this one i like having more fun with my videos and still be informative this one here is a little bit more serious because more serious people i think will probably want to watch this one uh i'm gonna make a playlist of all the stuff i've done to this baler just a couple more things hay moisture uh hay preservative uh this hitch for a coons accumulator things like that so pick something out and watch it uh might subscribe down below hit that little notification bell all that good jazz guys I hope you have a wonderful day. Talk to you later.